Hey everyone, this is Derek, and this is section 11.4, uh, Systems of Nonlinear Equations, and we'll look at some systems of both linear and nonlinear inequalities. Uh, for nonlinear equations, we're going to look at two methods of solving, and they're the same ones we've already done just a couple sections back. We'll use uh, substitution and elimination, and which we use really depends on kind of what we're presented with and what seems like the easiest way to go. So um, these first, I think, three examples we're going to do are all going to be substitution problems, and then I'll show you the elimination uh, in a moment. So for this first one, it's y equals some stuff and y equals some other stuff. So that totally is a substitution problem because we just take this, drop it right in there for y, basically set them equal to each other, um, and then solve the resulting equation. So now we have, have them equal. Um, I prefer to keep the x squared positive, so I'm going to bring everything to this side. And that will give us 0 equals x squared. I'd be adding the 5x, so plus 5x. And then when I add that 3, it cancels out this one. Or you could just think of it as if you have minus 3 on both sides, you can reduce them. Um, <clears throat> and so then here, uh, yeah, x plus 5. Um, x equals 0, and then x equals negative 5. So those are my x-coordinates of my solutions, but we also need y-coordinates. And what we are finding when we're finding the solution to the system, if we think about this graphically, uh, x squared minus 3, that would be some sort of parabola. Uh, it would be a regular parabola shifted down 3 units. It looks something like that. And then uh, negative 5x uh, minus 3, that would be a line with the y-intercept at negative 3 and a slope of negative 5. So that would look something like that. And what we were finding is the, the points of intersection between those two graphs. So what we found is that there's one point of intersection at 0 right here, and there's going to be another one over here at negative 5, but we haven't found the y values yet. So we can plug back into either one of these. Um, that one actually looks easier, so I'll do that. y equals 0 squared minus 3, so y equals minus 3. So there's that point. When x is 0, y is negative 3. That's our first solution, but now these are nonlinear systems, so we can have more than one solution depending on the geometry. Um, so over here, when x was negative 5, if I plug that in, I got y equals negative 5 quantity squared minus 3. 25 minus 3 would be 22. So when x is negative 5, y is 22. So somewhere way up off the page at negative 5, 22, that's my other point of intersection between those two graphs. So those would be my two solutions. Um, graphing is not necessary for solving these, but it is helpful for understanding. I think the geometry makes sense, kind of why we're getting the sorts of answers we get. So this next one, um, I can't do elimination because I can't add these together and eliminate either x's or y's because I don't have like terms. So that's how I know it's kind of a substitution problem. And then what I want to do is just decide to get one of those variables by itself. Um, I arbitrarily picked x. I could have picked y. It wouldn't have mattered. Um, so I picked x. So I made it x equals 11 minus y. And then what that does is gives me x in terms of y, and I can plug this in right there for x. So then that becomes 11 minus y quantity squared minus y squared equals 121. And then I can expand this. Um, I'm using the um, special products. So it's going to go 11 times 11 is 121. 11 times then you know 2ab, so 11 times 2 times y, so minus 22y. And then y times y would be y squared and positive because of the double sign. And then minus y squared equals 121. So plus y squared, minus y squared, those are gone. Minus 121 on both sides, and then those are gone. And so then you're left with negative 22y equals 0. So that pretty much means y equals 0. And once we know y equals 0, we have to solve for x already. So x equals 11 minus 0, or x equals 11. And so that would be 11 comma 0. So for this next one, since this is already solved for y, um, I could take this piece right here and just drop it in for that y. And that gets me an equation in terms of x. And 
and then I'll go ahead and expand this. So x squared plus uh, x squared, x squared would be x to the fourth. 2ab would be minus 8 uh, x squared, and then minus 4 squared is 16 equals 60. Uh, if you're not loving that, write them side by side, do your FOIL steps, and you'll get to the exact same spot. Um, let's see, getting everything in descending order, we'd have x to the fourth, x squared minus 8x squared, so that's going to be minus 7x squared, and then plus 16 equals 60. Um, let's treat this like a quadratic, so I'm going to bring that 60 over, and that's going to give me x to the fourth minus 7x squared minus 44 equals 0. And then if there's two numbers that multiply to be negative 44 and add to be negative 7, then I'm set. I'll be able to factor it, and there are. And this time, since this is x to the fourth, it's going to split up x squared, x squared, and that's going to give me that x squared back in the middle. And then my numbers would be negative 11 and positive 4. So x squared could equal 11, which means x would equal plus or minus root 11. So there's two distinct x's there. Here, if I try to solve this, I get x squared equals negative 4, and we're into the land of imaginary numbers. So that doesn't produce um, a solution from that branch. But we do get two x solutions here. So if I plug those in for y, I would have y equals square root of 11 squared minus 4. Square root of 11 squared is 11 minus 4, or 7. So my first solution is root 11 and then 7. My second solution, when I plug in the negative root 11 right here, I'm going to square it and it's going to become that exact same 11. So likewise, negative root 11 will also produce a solution of 7. Um, on this one, the geometry, that's a circle of radius about 7 and a half. And then that's a parabola shifted down 4. So what we found was those, I didn't draw that very well, but those two symmetrical points um, up here. Okay, then for this next example, um, notice this time we have x squared, y squared, x squared, y squared. So that is a good candidate for doing um, an elimination method, because if I add these equations together, I don't even have to do anything. It's already plus y squared minus y squared. So if I just add those together as they are, I get 1x squared plus 2x squared would make 3x squared. Those cancel. 52 minus 4 would be 48. Divide the 3 over, and x squared equals 16. Root both sides, and x equals plus or minus 4. And so right there I got um, two values for x. Um, so elimination is great when it works. A lot of times it won't on these, so that's where you just have to kind of look at what you're given and figure out, should I do it as a substitution problem or an elimination problem? Um, once I got my 4s, Let's go ahead and put them back in this original equation. So 4 squared plus y squared equals 52. That would be 16 plus y squared equals 52. Bring that over. y squared equals 36. So y equals plus or minus 6. And that's because I am taking the square root of both sides, which is the same thing I did here. Um, so notice when I put in 4, I get two answers for that. So that means that's really 4, 6, and then 4, negative 6 as well. Um, and then you can see when I put in negative 4 right here, if I change that to negative 4 and I square it, it goes right back to the 16. So I'm going to get negative 4, 6, and negative 4, uh, negative 6. So those would be my four solutions. I think on this one on the answer box, they're nice and they give you something like this, oops, and you just go 4 and 6, and then that takes care of typing all that. But what this is, is four distinct solutions, and that's because, let's see, this one would be a hyperbola of some form, we'll just make it that one, yeah, it would be that one, and then this would be a circle, pretend like that looks circular, and what we just found was these four points of intersection, so four solutions. Okay, the last thing in this section is uh, systems of inequalities. And I did some linear as well as nonlinear just because I didn't have very many problem choices um, to pick from. So we were doing some linear ones as well. So a little review of graphing lines um, is not a terrible thing. So uh, for this first problem, we're given is two inequalities. 
and then we're asked to find what is the solution set. And so these are not just like a, an inequality on a line, they're an inequality on a two-dimensional graph. And so what that means is half of the graph will work for it and half of the graph won't work. So looking at this first equation here, I have y equals, or y is less than one-third x plus one. Um, I graph these on Desmos just because it does such a better job of graphing in terms of straight lines than I do. Um, so what I would have done on paper is I would have graphed my intercept right there at one, and then I would have used my slope and I would have gone over three and up one, and there's my next point. With um, greater thans and less thans, when we're graphing in two dimensions, where we used to use an open hole um, to say the point isn't included, we would use a dashed line. So less than and greater than, those would get a dashed boundary like we can see on this one. When we have uh, less than equal to, greater than equal to, that's where we use a solid line. So what used to be open and solid is now dashed and solid for our boundaries. And then um, in terms of shading, if we think about, if we got something like X is greater than three, you know, and here's three, and we're trying to figure out which way to shade it. If I put in four, four is greater than three, four makes it true, that's the side we shade. If I put in two, two is not greater than three, that's the side we wouldn't have drawn on when this is a one-dimensional graph. That's kind of the same idea as this, except now instead of having, you know, left or right, now we have half or half of the graph. Um, a nice way to look at this, if, it, if the Y is by itself, is just, this is saying, where are the Y values less than this line? Um, well, all under the line. That's where the Y's any of the y's are going to come in less than the line. If it was flipped the other way, it'd say where the y greater than the line would shade this side. Um, another way of looking at it is using a test point. If I put in, and I pick 0, 0 only because it's easy, you could pick any point not on the graph. But if I put 0, 0 into this equation and it works, it keeps it true, that means it worked, like this 4. 0 is less than 1. That's true. So that point satisfies this inequality. So that means this one would be shaded here. So you can use test points, but when you realize this is saying, where are the y values coming in under the line? Here, where what y values would come out larger than the line? All the ones over here. And then where the y is equal to the line, that's what's on the dashed line. Um, so you can really just kind of look at these and, and know where to shade. Um, this next one, so this is in standard form. So I would graph this by saying, when x is zero, y is three. So x is zero, y is three. And then I would let y equals 0, and I'd say 3x equals 12, so x would be 4. So when x is 4, y is 0. And then there's the boundary for my green one. And if we do our test point, um, 0 plus 0 is greater than 12. Uh, 0 is not greater than 12, so we would not shade this side because that point didn't work. We would shade the other side. Uh, so then once we do that, our solution set is this little region right here. And the computer will take care of drawing that for you. Once you draw the lines and you click which side um, you want to shade, then you just submit and it'll grade that. Um, I have another little short video on submitting these problems if you're having trouble um, getting them entered in the computer. Um, so anyhow, that would be what's called the feasibility region. And so that's our solution set for this system of inequalities. Okay, so for this next one, this is y is less than negative 2x plus 3. So it's a linear equation. I would start graphing that at x equals 3. My slope is negative 2, right? Remember rise over run. And so my rise is down 2. I'm going to run 1, and that would be my next point. You could also make a little table if you wanted. And then where the y values, what y values are less than, than the ones that equal this line. So the line is the dashed, and then the y values that are less than that would be underneath it. Um, and again, you can test 0, 0, 0 is less than 3 is true, so we would shade where this blue shading is. Um, this one is our basic parabola shifted down 4. So there's our vertex at minus 4, and then we would just go over 1, up 1, and click a point, and that would graph the parabola. And again, this is saying where are the y values less than or equal to this parabola? underneath. If it's greater than, it would be, you would think of it as above. Um, or test 0, 0, 0 is less than negative 4, that comes out false, so you'd be shading everything on the outside. So then our solution set 
is this double shaded region right through there. Um, here, linear, so we have uh, negative x plus 1, so we'd start at x equals 1, and then slope of negative 1, so it's going to go over 1, down 1, and that would define that boundary. Uh, another less than, so where the y is less than the line underneath, so that's the blue shading. And then here, this one's a little tougher to shade or to, to graph because of that 1 fourth. We know it's going to shift down 2, so we got our vertex, and then we just have to get that 1 fourth going. Um, a good spot to do that would be at x equals 2, and here's how come. Um, if you let x equal 2, 2 squared makes 4. So you can see I'm just picking something that will be convenient. And then y is 1. So when x is 2, uh, y is 1. And that's I'm doing that from the vertex. So that it's just going over 2 and up 1. Um, or I can think of it as right here, and then shift to get all down 2. Um, so then that gets us those two points. Uh, this time, y, the y values, what y values are greater than this parabola? That would be all the ones above it, which are kind of on the inside in this case. So then our solution set is that little sliver right there. Okay, and then for this one, we got y is less than 4x squared minus 5. So that minus 5 means we're going to have a parabola shifted down 5. And then that 4 is actually pretty easy to graph. This time, we just get to go over 1, up 4. It was harder on the last one because we go over 1, up a 4th, and we can't graph that. That's why we had to kind of sneak around and grab that other point. Um, but here, if there's a whole number out front, it's just over and up that much. And then this one is where the y is less than the graph. So that would be kind of think of it as underneath. So all this green area. Um, or again, test 0, 0. 0 is less than negative 5. And 0 is not less than negative 5. So that is not shaded. We're shading the outside of the graph. Um, this one would be uh, plus 2. So that would be my intercept and my slope is a half. So I'd be going over 2 and up 1. So that would be my next point. Um, dashed. Uh, because there's no equals, and then where are the y values greater than the line, think above, and so then I have kind of like uh, Michigan here, we have these two separate regions um, that would be the solution set.